Hey everybody, um, I know it's been a while, uh, so I've gotten kind of a lot of subscribers over the past few months, and a lot of attention paid to this series, which I didn't actually expect at all when I started creating this. Um, this was just like a project I was doing with my class, so, um, yeah, once, uh, summer hit, I kind of took a little break, uh, from work, and then, uh, once the new school year started and, and things got kind of a little hectic, uh, I was teaching a new course, and, um, so I was, a lot of my time was being spent on that, um, and, uh, you know, moving things into the, the virtual realm, uh, so, I uh, finally feel like I'm caught up for, in, from a work perspective, so I'm, gonna try and push out a couple more of these videos that I know a lot of you have been uh, asking me about um, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it so yeah uh, I, I did find a bug I was playing with this a little bit earlier I found a bug which I'll fix in another video where you can castle uh, queenside even if a knight is still there so um, uh, for example just make some moves here. Uh, the the uh, king is actually allowed to castle here, which is definitely a bug. So that's one I'll have to fix. Um, haven't really looked at why that's happening. Um, I, it's because we're not checking the square for check, but we do need to check to make sure there's not a, a black piece there. So um, we'll we'll fix that in a later video, but as well as I think there's some other bugs that people have mentioned in comments, um, which we'll, I'll look at. So there'll be a video coming out with that stuff. Uh, but I finally wanted to get into the AI part, because I think that's a, what a lot of you were looking forward to. Um, and so I'm gonna start with this video, simply setting up and having uh, the computer play as white or black and just getting a random move and making a random move. So it won't be a very good AI, uh, as, as it will just look at random moves and, and make them. Uh, and then we'll slowly add improvements to it and we'll look at uh, some of the algorithms that we can uh, do for this. So um, let's get into it. So to start out, uh, we are going to be looking at our main. Our engine for right now actually is gonna pretty much remain as is. Um, we don't really, need to add in any classes for the AI here. We're going to basically make a new module that handles all our AI responsibilities and then implement that in our um, in our main. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a uh, Python file here and I'm just going to name it uh, Smart Move Finder. You could name it Chess AI or something like that. And I'm going to put it inside of my chess folder. Now the smart move finder is we're, we're gonna for, for right now simply uh, have a random statement or a random method that just gets a random move from uh, the set of valid moves and returns that. But later on we're gonna add in other methods that um, use smarter algorithms. So to start off with with this, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and define a method called uh, Zoom in here a little bit. Uh, find random move, and the the random move is is simply going to take for right now. It's just going to take a list of the valid moves, and so we're going to pass in a list of the the valid moves, which are currently being kept track of in the main anyway. And it's just going to pick one of those at random. So let's make sure that we import random. And then, uh, since valid moves as a list, we're gonna one one uh, method that we can use is random dot random int. And this not this method returns a if I put in a and b here as parameters, it returns a number between a and b. Uh, this, unlike some other random methods, returns it's inclusive of both a and b. Uh, a lot of other methods are inclusive for the first parameter and exclusive for the second parameter. So if you're working in like Java or, or C sharp, it's gonna look a little bit different. Um, so you just have to make sure you read the documentation carefully. So here we have zero, and then uh, since valid moves is a list, we're going to say length of valid moves, 
and then I'm going to do minus 1 here. Okay. Uh, and and the reason the reason is my index cannot cannot be length of valid moves. If it is, if it goes that I would go out of bounds. Like it, let's say I have 10 valid moves, then this would give me a random number between 0 and 10, but unlike other languages, it includes 10. And so 10 would actually be an index out of bounds. So make sure you have that minus 1 that's really important there. And we will just access it. It's in a list, so we'll use our square bracket notation to access the valid move. And we simply will return this. All right, so this is not yet a smart move finder, but I want to just set up the basis for this. And then we can add in other methods, such as, uh, like, like later on, we'll, we'll have a find best move method or something like that. And for right now, we can just have it return or whatever. And we'll be able to pass in methods, and it will return in a move. So we'll work on this like next video. Um, right now, I just want to get the, the random part set up in our main. Well, actually, no, maybe I'll get to that in this video. I don't think the part in the main will take too long to set up. So, OK. Anyway, so in our main, we've we've got some stuff here. We got the images. We got this main. We got a lot of a lot of variables. A lot of stuff happening already. So, we we want to do this in a way that uh, that makes sense with, without adding too much. At this point, like it is getting a little bit cluttered. Like especially like with this mouse pointer, I think it would would not be a bad idea to put this into another method. Um, this is kind of like your player move AI uh, in a sense, like where the player clicked. And you could certainly pass in like the event uh, to a method, and then and then check all these things. I'm not going to move things around. I'm going to leave it as is. But you know that might be something to clean up your code uh, a little bit, just to because there is a lot here. There's a lot in this main method, and uh, as long as we comment things and and keep things organized, it's it's okay. Um, but the question is like, where do I put this, and how do I get it to know whether or not I want it to be a player? or a computer and uh, you know which one which so um, I've, I've come up with like a little notation and this is uh, one thing you can do and since we're only gonna have one difficulty of computer then at this point we'll make we'll just make a variable called player one and we'll have this be either true or false and the meaning behind this is that if if a human is playing so if a human is playing white, then this will be true. If an AI is playing, then false. So if we want, and, and this will be the same but for black. And so we'll set, we'll start with our AI just testing it on black. So again, uh, same as above but for black. So if we wanted two AIs, then our then our variables would be false and false. Now, if we had different levels of difficulty for AIs, then we could uh, essentially make this like an integer value, and the integer would represent like the AI difficulty. So maybe zero would be a player, and then like one uh, to ten would be like the difficulties or something like that. Um, or you could even have like you could create like an interface for an AI, and then plug in the different AIs, but it's all more advanced and I want to keep this kind of simple. So we're going to just use these two uh, Boolean variables for this. And the nice thing about this is we can now say, uh, we, we can now check to see when a mouse button is clicked of whether or not it's a player or a human's turn to move. So that's I'm actually going to do that before I go through the events before I handle the mouse events, I'm, I want to check to make sure that it is a human that's playing. Now, one, one of the things that we're not going to do in this video is we're not going to thread, which means while our AI is thinking and trying to come up with a move, the UI will be unresponsive. And we can solve this by uh, doing what's called an asynchronous method. Again, that might be something I implement a little bit later I haven't played with asynchronous methods too much in Python, um, so I'm, I'm I'm sure it's I'm sure they have a way of doing it, but I'm not well versed in terms of that for Python. So again, we're gonna we're gonna keep it simple. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up with 
uh, a Boolean variable called human turn, or you could call it is human turn. And it's just going to be true if a human should be going and false if an AI should be going. So we're, we're going to use this, uh, this, this uh, player one and player two. So we have to check, first of all, if, um, if the game state uh, white to move uh, is true, then, then that means that it's player one's turn. And then we want to also make sure that a human is pay playing player one. And so the reason we made this a Boolean is because now I can just very easily say and player one. So now it's a human turn if it's whites to move and, it's pl and player one is true because a human is playing white. And then the same thing for black. So we can do or it's not white to move and player two. So those two variables now will... Uh, allow us to get this this idea of it being a human turn. Okay. Um, yeah, let's now see where do we we want to use this. So I I still want to register these mouse mouse button down events, but I want to check now not only if it's game over, but also if it's a human turn. Because otherwise, a player would be able to go during the AI's turn. And maybe we do want to be able to click pieces and show potential moves, but we don't actually want to be able to make a move. And so, like later on, we'll we'll try to make this asynchronous, and then um, so the the computer is thinking, and you're still able to interact with the chessboard while the computer is thinking of a move. But if you actually like try to move a piece, it won't let you do that. And so right now we don't have that in place. So we're just going to put a kind of a flag here to make it stop. So if if it is the human's turn, then we'll allow the mouse clicks to go through. And if it's not, uh, then the, the mouse clicks won't be able to go through. Now, we can check this th to see if this is working right now um, already by making a move as white. And now you'll see that the mouse clicks don't do anything. Uh, it's black's turn to move, but black is supposed to be playing by, by an AI. And so we actually can't do anything. Now we can still undo a move and then it allows us to register the clicks again because our key presses are not in, in this if statement. Our key presses are down here. So we'll still be able to undo the move and th this does wind up having some weird bugs, especially if the computer is moving really fast. If you want to undo a computer move, you kind of have to spam the Z key. Again, this is things like we probably want to fix and um, we, the way we do that is by making this think asynchronously, um, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, all right, so we have sort of the setup for it now. We have our way of telling uh, if player one is going to be an AI, and, and we could pet, pit two AIs against each other by making these both false. We wanted to do that, and, and we'll, we'll do that later to, to test this out, make sure it works for both black and white. So we can skip over the logic for um, the player, but we want to pay attention to this logic here. So when we made a move, we had to set these two variables to true, move nade and animate equals true. And that's going to be similar for an AI. The difference is once we go through the all the events handled, what we're going to do is we're now going to add in the logic for the AI. So it's right above where we move, we make the move. Because the animation part of this is still going to be the same regardless of whether it's a computer making a move or it's a human making a move. So this will be the AI uh, move finder logic. So what is this going to look like? Well, we have to call our our um, our smart move finder class. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import that along with my chess engine. So I'm going to import smart move finder. This will allow me to reference this method here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, ask again to make sure that it's not game over. We don't want the computer to be able to make a move if, if the game is over. So just as we didn't want the human to be able to make a move if it was game over. So this is going to happen if it's not game over and it's not the human turn. So again, we're using that Boolean variable now to check the other side of this coin. And this doesn't require a click or anything like that. That's why it's not inside the events. We want the AI to move automatically. 
So all that's going to check is if it's not the human's turn, that means it's the AI's turn, and they should try and make a move. So uh, we are going to get the AI move by simply saying uh, smart move finder dot uh, find random move. And we're going to go ahead and pass in our valid moves, which is our list that we've, we had that's getting updated. I could also say games.get valid moves here. The problem with this is this would actually be, uh, the, the reason why this is not good is this would actually be generating the valid moves again, and we already have them generated. So I, I don't want to have to generate them again. That's extra work and would just slow down our AI a lot if we did it that way. Um, so yeah, we're just going to throw that in there. And then um, it's going to find a random move. And then we're, we're going to tell it to make that move. So go ahead and make this AI move. Set move made to true. Same thing we did in the person move. And set animate to true so that the animation happens as well. All right, so those two things are going to happen. Uh, and then it's going to go to here. And so if the AI has finished making a move, which it has, then it'll animate. Now what we, we can do later on is we can basically call this method and um, let it run in the background. So again, the, 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 it frees up the animation and, and it frees up everything to continue to, do, to be able to interact with it. We'll see later on as we make our algorithm more complicated, the computer needs more time to think and the UI will be unresponsive during that time, which is not a desirable behavior for an application. All right, but this should, at this point, should work nicely. So let's test it out. And so it's whites to move, so we will make a move. And black immediately responds with a random move, which actually ends up being a, a good move. Uh, and that is not a good move, but it is a random move. And so we are able now to capture the queen that it, so it does not know what it's doing. Right. But it does. It is just playing valid moves, so it's gonna have to move the king here. Uh, yeah, and and so it's not having itself a really great time here. Um, let's see here. It's probably a faster way to checkmate, but it seems like it's working relatively well. Um, I'm so bad at chess. Yeah, but anyway, it's it it's working. It's making random moves. So let's try now black versus white with AI only. So let's make them both uh, false and watch what happens as we run our code. And immediately it begins playing a game. And it's, again, it's making just random moves. Um, very interesting. Just gave up the queen for free. Nice. All right. So, yeah, it's not, not great AI, um, but it is playing the game of chess, and it is following the rules of chess. Um, I'm sure that this game of chess has never been played before. I can, I can say that with almost a hundred percent certainty that this game you're watching right now has never been, never been played. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'm at 20 minutes right now for this video. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and actually wrap this one up here. Um, so yeah, this is just, again, this is just setting up our, our, uh, our interface, getting it ready to use AI. And then what, what we've done nicely here that we'll see is now all we have to do is just call a different method. So now we can put our more complicated move logic in here uh, for finding an actual good move and, and then returning it. All right. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll work on this video and probably have it up 
up pretty soon. But uh, until until then, I will. Uh, I'll see. I'll see you. All right. Thanks.